Here at the Critter Station, you'll find Andrew Heaton. He is the Restoration Monitoring Specialist, and with him is Mike Archer. He's our Coastal Ecologist. And we also have Jennifer Cumbus. She's the Education Specialist. So we have uh, a two-toed amphiuma here. So these guys look a lot like snakes, but they're actually aquatic salamanders. And if you look closely, you can see two pairs of tiny limbs that they have. All right, so this guy right here actually has a few different names. You may know him as a crayfish, a crawfish, or even a mud bug. And all of those are based on where in the country you are and how you like to eat them. So they're really popular for humans to eat. But one of the really cool things about them is they belong to a family called crustaceans. And they are called that because they have this really cool exoskeleton. So you and I, we have an endoskeleton. That means all of our bones are on the inside of our bodies. This guy, all his structures, the things that allow him to move and the stuff that protects him is actually found on the outside. And that's why we call it an exoskeleton. Our next critters are fiddler crabs. Fiddler crabs are found all over the marshes and in habitats like salt pans. They are pretty cool. They're sexually dimorphic, meaning that the males and females look a little bit different from each other. The males have a huge claw that they'll use to attract females. They're also delicious to animals that live in the marsh, like diamondback terrapins and clapper rails and all other sorts of creatures. These right here are hermit crabs, and there are 800 different species, so that's quite a lot. And you can see that they have this shell. So all their bodies at the very back have this nice hook structure, and that actually allows them to stay inside of that shell. And as they grow, they will find bigger shells for them to have as their home. And what's really cool is once a hermit crab dies and vacates its shell, it actually releases a chemical that tells all the other crabs in the area, hey, my shell is now available. So anybody looking for a new home can be able to find one. All right, so this guy here is a Mississippi green water snake. So even though a lot of people think these guys are dangerous, they're completely harmless. They're not venomous like cottonmouths. You can tell them apart by uh, them not having the triangular heads that cottonmouths have, even though they live in the same wet habitats. So this guy here is a squirrel tree frog. So it looks a lot like a lot of the green frogs you'll have hanging out outside your house, but these guys actually get their name because when they're calling and talking to each other, it sounds a lot like squirrels chattering. Here we have a stone crab. It gets its name from looking like a stone underwater when it folds its arms in. You can tell the male and female apart because of the pattern on the base. This is a male because of this lighthouse or Washington monument shape. A female will have more of a U shape. Blue crabs have similar patterns. Alright guys, this is a diamondback terrapin and they are recognizable by this really unique, really, really pretty skin. So if you look at kind of this grayish color and it actually has these really pretty spots. So that's one of the main reasons we can tell it's a diamondback terrapin. Another is the scoops on its back are actually in a diamond shape, which is another way that it gets its name. And we can tell that this guy right here is a male because he's actually smaller. So the females will get a lot bigger. And he also has this really long tail. And so the females will actually have much shorter tails than this as well. And if you notice, there's this nice big contraption next to me. And this contraption is called a crab trap. So what people do is they drop them in the water and they will try to catch crabs. Okay, crabs can be pretty good eaten, so you know, can't really blame them there. The problem is, is that this guy right here loves to eat crabs just as much as humans do. And so he actually gets stuck in these, and because he needs air to breathe, when he gets stuck in these, it ends up harming him. He ends up dying. And so we are working with crabbers to use what we call turtle exclusion devices, also known as TEDs. And they are these orange squares that you can see in this crab trap here. And what that does is because it is a rectangle in shape, and because this diamondback terrapin is dome shaped, when he tries to go in that crab trap, he can't get in. But the crabs, which are flatter across the top, can get in. So the crabbers are happy because they still get to eat all their yummy crabs. And we are happy because our beautiful diamondback terrapins stay nice and safe. Here we have a yellow garden spider, it's an orb-weaving arachnid. Uh, typical spiders have two claws on each foot, 
This one actually has three to help it spin its complex webs.